Shalom, beloved. Welcome back to Code Searcher. All right, guys, I'm settled down in a place where I can record and uh, get some stuff out. Um, also, I've been having to deal with some legal issues since had me preoccupied, folks. So um, let me just jump back into this YouTube thing with a lesson on Shavuot. Now, today we were on Hangouts with BRI and uh, with Brother Larry and uh, Michelle and uh, uh, Dane Lumen and uh, I think Tamara was there, and we're talking about Shavuot, or Pentecost, and I remembered um, a brother, I believe he's in, in Israel, Yosef uh, Ben Nadi, um, had this teaching, among others, that he's had there, and this was pretty interesting, uh, I just wanted to share this with you, this is not my teaching, by the way, this is something that Yosef put together, and shared with me, and I want to share with you, because it has a, a lot of good information here. Um, for, for those of you that want to understand what we're going through right now um, in this, what we're calling the, um, the counting of the weeks. Um, Pentecost has three, three scriptural um, names for Pentecost. And he has here, Hakat Sevir, the Feast of Harvest, Yom, Habikaram, the Day of First Fruits, and of course, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. And this is the counting of the weeks from Passover to Pentecost, which would be seven weeks or um, 50 days. Now, it doesn't just stop there, folks. This is a this is an outline or a countdown through the feast that speak to the children of Israel and the covenant nation of America. Um, you know, one thing that's really interesting is this year that uh, Passover, I mean, excuse me, Pentecost is falling on Memorial Day. Or you know, around the bouts there. That's a that's an American holiday where we're remembering the dead. Now, uh, you know, Moses had to go back up on the mountain. So, so when he comes down and you know they're worshiping, they're worshiping idols, and you know this is uh, this, the 17th of Tammuz, which is going to be coming up here another 40 days. Um, I believe it's another 40 days. Uh, that's fallen on the 4th of July, you know, a very symbolic and has meaning. Anyway, uh, let's get into the, what this teaching he has here, because it's very important to understand what Shavuot or the Pentecost was. You know, it's actually the birth of the church. You know, this in Acts 2. Um, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty, as a, as a, of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there were appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire, and it set upon each of them. And it's an amazing thing. Can you imagine? I don't think this is just this is uh, symbolic imagery here. I believe this is actually something that took place where they have all of a sudden illuminated uh, by these cloven tongues of fire. Um, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Ruach HaKadosh, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were there, and they there, and there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, and each, out of every nation, under every, under heaven. Now when this was a noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because every man heard them speak in his own language. This is amazing. This is the, this is the manifestation of the power of God taking place here um you know they thought peter and them were, were drunk and and you know, peter even had to tell them uh this is but a certain hour of the day and uh, here it is there i just keep on reading and he says now he here every man in his own tongue wherein we were born parthians and medes and elamites and dwellers of mesopotamia and judea uh, cappadocia and pontus and asia uh, Thy thagyra and pamphlet all these words. Cretes, Arabians, and you know, you get the point. We do hear and speak the tongues of the wonderful works of God. And they were amazed, and each were in doubt, saying to one another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, These men were full of new wine. Uh, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, and he said to them, Men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken unto my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, but seeing that it is the third hour of the day, which is spoken, and this is what was spoken by the word 
by, by the prophet Joel. We're going to touch in that too. He's identifying here what's taking place. Um, very important that we understand this. This is the former reign and the latter reign. However, they didn't realize it at the time, but this was the first, the initial outpouring. They probably figured it was the second outpouring because the first for them would have been Moses at Sinai. So we got to see this pattern keep going through the, the, the ages because the church is grafted in. It's part of it. That's where we're coming to now in uh, where we're at in this, this tetrad. Um, I believe, folks, some of some of you are talking like on hangouts uh, about the rapture. I believe it's the outpouring spoken of in Joel. And this is over here, and it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Um, I believe we're coming into that, that point now. I mean, folks are already having these manifestations and experiences with dreams, and they're getting more and more stronger. Um, I, I believe this is the the outpouring and it's going to get more intense until it's an overflow of this and what else would be uh, you know sparking a um, revival than the outpouring of God's spirit now let's go back to Joseph's teaching and I'll just pull my camera off so we can read along here and we'll go back to where he has Pentecost has three names of scripture Two of which underscore the agricultural nature, Hag Haxit, excuse me, Hag Haxitzir, Feast of Harvest, the uh, Yam Habarikum, Day of the First Fruits, and Shavuot, Day of uh, Weeks. This is the Festival of Weeks. From the day after, excuse me, from the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheaf to weave offering, count seven full weeks, Shavuot, Levit Leviticus 23:15. Uh, in a rare alignment this year, Christian celebration on Pentecost, May 24th, coincides with the Jewish celebration of Shavuot. While many Christians will celebrate Pentecost on Sunday, at this time that the outpouring of the Rach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, on the church, few realize uh, that, that this special day originates with the Jewish holiday, or why this is significant. Uh, transcendence. Now, folks... This sounded like a New Age word, so I had to go look it up, and uh, uh, kind of worried me when I saw that. But it actually means, uh, you know, going to a new level of experience, and it's, and it's exactly what happened to the apostles in the uh, <laughs> when the Holy Spirit was pulled out. It was a new level. It was a another, uh, uh, you know, it was just a, a new realm for them to to step into. Uh, with power, it actually gave them power from God um, to do things. This is where the church was born, and there was many miracles that took place after this in uh, throughout the region until um, you know there, that this time was fulfilled. They were commanded to stay in Jerusalem, to preach unto the Jews, and to then go out into the nations, and uh, that, that's what took took place. And it was with the Holy Spirit. That, um, that this took that they had the power uh, from on high the dudamus to do this uh, excuse me I didn't mean to do that go back to here all right uh, the Shavuot weeks is also called Pentecost 50 because it's the holy festival is linked to the festival of Passover 50 days before this Greek name arrives from the, from the fact that Torah commands us to count seven weeks from the day of the first Sabbath Passover. This counting period is called the counting of the Omar. In Hebrew, the Sephirot HaKomar. The Sephirot HaKomar begins with a wave offering of barley and continues for 49 days. Seven days, seven weeks, equals 49. Until the wheat offering on Shavuot. And that's where we are. The number 49 in Judaism represents the natural of full cycle of full quota of measure. The word for measure in Hebrew is midah, and this word has numeric value of 49. So the number 49 represents, to the epitome of a good measure, uh, Jewish wisdom on numbers, moving from 49 to 50 represents moving through the natural stages into supernatural. Uh, since 50 is the number of transcendence, again, I, that word sounded new age to me, but when I looked it up, 
I can actually understand why Yosef is using it here. It represents a d d designated endpoint. For instance, the exodus of, uh, from Egypt can be seen as the beginning of 50 days of ascending redemption for the Jewish people, beginning of the redemption at the Passover, and ending with the pinnacle of Shavuot, the giving of Torah on Mount Sinai. This is also what God gave them a, an identity, folks, and a heritage. A, they became a nation um, at this point. All right. God uses this numbers pattern for weeks of years. After 49 years, seven cycles of Shemitah. Again, we're talking about Shemitahs here. Sabbatical rest <coughs> for the land every seven years. For the Yovel, or the Jubilee, has reached on the 50th year. This would be a special Shemitah, which in Hebrew is called the Shnach Shemitah, which is the 7th, 7th, um, or the 50th year, which which here is talking about the Yovel, um, 50 Penta, which represents freedom and liberation. This 50th day on Pentecost therefore also points to the year of Jubilee, at which time the shofar's ram would sound, and all slaves would go free, and all debts are canceled. And you shall consecrate a fifth, on the 50th year, proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a Jubilee, a Yovel, for you, and each of you shall return of his property to and each of you shall return to his clan. And by the way, folks, the word Shemitah in Hebrew means the year of re or release uh, or, or to fall is what, what that word would mean. So here is the people are being released or their debts are allowed to fall from them. Their bonds fall from them and they are set free. Um, and you shall consecrate, excuse me, return to his own clan. This is in Leviticus 25.10. Of course, number seven is also significant. Seven is a number representing wholeness, perfection, and completion. For example, in six days, God created the universe, but on the seventh day, his work was completed, and therefore he rested. Now, following the, pounder, the, the pattern of counting the Omar, seven weeks of seven, 49, that lead to the day of harvest and transcendence, or the change, we are also counting down to the days in the expectation of supernatural harvest when all is complete and perfect during the messianic reign faithful followers of yeshua will rule and reign and judge over him in the world that recognize the god of israel you can find it in these scriptures here that is the epitome of transcendence he says preparing to receive the torah on shabbat because the holy temple is no longer standing in jerusalem the jewish people can no longer bring an offering of omar Nevertheless, the counting is still observed. This 50-day period, which culminates with Shavuot, is considered a journey of self-discovery, refinement, and a time to reflect on our character, to prepare ourselves to receive and live out God's transcendent word. According to rabbinic tradition, Shavuot commemorates the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai, Although scripture does not explicitly state this, receiving the Torah seven weeks, their miraculous exodus from Egypt meant not only accepting the privilege of living God as God's set apart people, but it also meant as, excuse me, <laughs> I just messed up my, my flow there. Uh, it also meant accepting the responsibility it became to agree upon standard of behavior or code of conduct for both a native-born Israelite and a stranger who came to join with them. You know, it is said that um, with Israel were also a mixed multitude that come out of there with them. So they were part of the nation. Uh, let's see. One law and one custom shall be for you and the stranger who dwells with you. Numbers 15, 16. Shavuot, the bride and the bridegroom. The Torah is so much more than just lists of rules, and, and Mount Sinai was not simply a place to receive the law, but it represented the sealing of a covenant between God and his people as a bridegroom to his beloved bride. The message of Shavuot is that we are significant to God, and, and he has chosen people. Excuse me. <laughs> he has chosen, appointed, and appointed us to proclaim and live out his purpose in the world by bringing us into his coven uh, coven covenantal 
relationship through accepting his Torah. Now that God has given us Torah, he has entrusted us within sacred mission to spread the light of all nations, to all the nations. Likewise, Yeshua, final words, was us to give, excuse me, to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them as God had commanded us. To go and make disciples of all nations, immersing them with the mikvah of the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. The supernatural power on Shavuot. Is Shavuot mentioned in the Brit Hagad, excuse me, the Brit Hagadshah, the New Testament? Is it the ancient biblical festival relevant to the New Covenant followers of Yeshua today? Definitely. It is no accident that God chose this very day to pour out the Ruach HaKodesh on Yeshua's disciples, who had been waiting in Jerusalem in obedience to his final instructions. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for my gift from my Father. Uh, excuse me, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John immersed with water, but in a few days you will be immersed with the Ruach HaKodesh. <coughs> excuse me. You will receive power from the when the Ruach HaKodesh comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. What an awesome event in history. Amen. On Shavuot, Adonai supernaturally poured out the Ruach HaKodesh on Yeshua's followers, so they were empowered to leave, to excuse me, to live a holy, spirit-led life, and to be witnesses in Jerusalem with all of Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. <laughs> I did it again. They moved out of the realm of the natural into the supernatural and as can all believers in Yeshua. While keeping the Torah uh, is not how we are saved, but nevertheless strive to live as holy, strive to live holy lives, set apart from the, whole, from the world. Why? Because we are saved. That holiness leads to love, which is the whole point of truth of Torah. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in one statement. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 15, 14. Also uh, Leviticus 19, 18. Yes, Shavuot is very important festival for all followers of Yeshua, both native born and those wild branches grafted in to the olive tree. In fact, the two loaves of leavened bread called the Shetay, uh, Shetayim, Halakim were brought into the temple to and offered on Shavuot. Uh, those loaves can be understood to represent Jew and Gentile. I've touched on something very similar to this in some of my teachings here um, about the grafting in. Yes, Shavuot is a very important festival for all followers of Yeshua. Excuse me. Uh, bringing two loaves of ten tenth of two tenths and ephod and the finest flour baked in the, with yeast. As a wave offering of first fruits to the Lord, Leviticus 23:17. Although Shavuot is considered many as to be the birth of the church, the people who experienced the Ruach Hakodesh in the time of God, fearing Jews from the from the na many nations. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Acts 2:5. And on Shavuot, Israel saw an amazing re reversal after receiving Torah on Mount Sinai. This is very interesting here. 3,000 souls perished because of the sin of the golden calf. Exodus 32:28. Now listen to this. On the same days, those years later, this same number of souls were saved of the Ruach HaKodesh was poured out. Almost 3,000 people were added to the church. This was the birth of the church here. Acts 2:41. The Spirit of God reversed the destruction caused by the sin of man. And Yeshua's followers worked tirelessly to bring the good news to all of Israel and beyond the Gentiles. Exercising love and generosity. One of the very first things of, um, these believers did after receiving the Spirit of God was the form of Messianic kibbutz, the communal lifestyle, where they shared all things in common and no longer lived to fulfill their own selfish desires. They shared all they had with everyone in need, anyone in need, excuse me. May each of us experience the Ruach HaKodesh in a fresh, new, powerful way this year on Shavuot, transforming our hearts and making us more generous givers. God gave us two of his most priceless gifts on that day, the Torah, his holy word, 
and the Ruach HaKodesh. We need both truth and Ruach, the truth and spirit. The Torah is the word of truth, the Devar Amet, but it is spirit that gives us the grace to live out that truth in our daily lives. Amen. One of those truths is the concept of celebrating God's goodness through giving. Celebrating goodness of God three times a year, all, uh, your men must appear before the Lord your God in the place where he ch will choose at the festival of unleavened bread, Passover, the festival of a week's Shavuot, and the festival of tabernacles, Sukkot. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord has blessed you. Deuteronomy 16, 16, 17. Shavuot is one of three pilgrimage festivals in which the Jewish people would come to Jerusalem to bring the offerings to the temple. The people would uh, were to come before the Lord with offerings directly proportional to how God, uh, how the Lord had blessed them. Of course, the word of the Lord exhorts us to give throughout the year to the Levites, those who serve the holy sanctuary, and the ministers and teachers of the word, and all the foreigners and the fatherless and the widows. We see a scripture that the blessing of God has blessed us. We are not just for our own gain. We are to share with others who are in need. Amen. And it was for this reason that God commanded the people not to harvest the entire field, but to leave the four corners of the for the poor. Praise God. We're going into the four corners here. And I've, I touched on this um, in a previous teaching as well. The four corners in Boaz and Ruth. That's the story of um, the 144,000 that are marked to, uh, you know, God left behind as a love offering. This is something he did, uh, he does in, in, in the, when the rapture takes place, when the harvest takes place. Those four corners are left because of love to, to save those so sojourners and poor people that are left behind. And here we see it in this, um, Joseph is bringing it uh, as well, bringing it. To, to the forefront as well. When you reap your harvest of your land, do not reap the four edges, excuse me, the very edges of your field, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor, for the foreigner residing among you. For I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 23, 22. Therefore, the traditional scripture reading the sh for Shavuot is the book of Ruth, who gleaned the fields of Boaz. Traditional, uh, Jewish tradition calls us for all to study the book of Ruth during the eve of Shavuot. And that's why, folks, is because of that story. Um, amazing, amazing. I just love that. God never asks us to do anything he has not already done. We can give out, we can't outgive God. He is the most generous giver. One of the best known scriptures from, from the Gospels is John 3.16. And he says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish, but he have eternal life. Please pray that in the harvest festival, the Lord of the harvest, Adonai HaKatsir, will send forth laborers into the harvest fields of Israel, and to harvest the souls the uh, his kingdom to be plentiful. And he said unto his disciples, The harvest is plenty, plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send workers out to harvest the field. Matthew 9, 37 through 38. May your Shavuot be filled unto overflowing with the spirit of the living God. And may each of us be transformed by his power, love, mercy, and forgiveness. And extend grace where we have been extended. Excuse me. And extend the grace we have experienced to those around us. Uh, and that's the end of Yosef's uh, teaching here. Very good, Yosef. God bless you, brother. And um, I hope you didn't mind it. I shared this with the YouTube community, but I thought it was very well put together and thought out. And I hope it blessed those that are watching as much as it's blessed me. So, folks, God bless you. And listen, be looking at this Shavuot for the outpouring mentioned in Joel. Praise God. I believe that's what's going to take place. Just like the the former rain and the latter rain um, mentioned in, in Joel and experienced by the apostles in second acts. I believe it's going to happen again. And uh, we're, we're at that, that point now. So be looking for the next video, folks. It'll be uh, on a table coming out in just a little bit. God bless you.